Hello Internet, I'm Guy. Today I'm continuing work on the crypto clock, the clock that shows time by moving a little ball inside an inclinometer by rotating the clock face, where the ball ends up points at one of the dots that will indicate where you are in the time scale of 1 through 12 hours, of course. So today I'm going to be making uh, the legs, two in the front and one in the back. The rear one will be adjustable for height to level the clock. And I'll also be making a little brass nubbin that goes on the top that you will touch or wave your hand near to activate the clock to actually change from pen pendulum mode where it's swinging back and forth to showing the actual time. I'll also make another little nubbin in the center to cover up a small hole I have to make in the dead center of the clock as part of the fabrication process. And finally, I'll make a clear plexiglass front cover with 12 screws on it that will be in the clock hand positions but serve no functional purpose because all of the time is told with the inclinometer and not with any hands pointing at clock positions. So let's jump right in. I've set up my metal lathe with a dust collection jig so I can make these wooden test legs before I go to the brass ones. I'm using my recently acquired ball forming jig uh, and obviously a powerful vacuum to keep all the dust off my machine. These legs are all going to have hemispheric ends and this ball forming jig is just perfect for that. So a little shaping, a little sanding, and I'm going to make three legs. Uh, there's what it looks like. So now I'm drilling the holes in the case, and I set up a rather elaborate jig here on my drill press. I think that's the lowest I've ever set my table. Got all these angle brackets and clamps, and I just wanted to make it really sturdy and steady so that I can go in there with a Forstner bit. So this is one of the front two legs I'm going to drop in with the Forstner bit. These bits make, of course, a very perfect radius uh, hole and a flat bottom, which will allow the 3 8 inch brass to drop right in there. This is the uh, rear leg. Now, of course, this is models for the brass legs, and you see I've already made one brass leg there, but what I'm doing now is checking the lengths that I've cut them to to make sure that when I stand it up, it stands up vertically and correctly. And so there it does. It's actually close enough. It leans back just a tiny bit, but that's why I'm making the rear leg adjustable. So you'll see how I do that shortly. So now I'm going to start doming over one of the legs here. As you saw, I'd already done one, but I just wanted to show you the process here. This ball forming jig is really neat. It's a very inexpensive device that I found on, I think it's Amazon or eBay. And I'm quite tickled with it. The carbide insert bits allow you to just swap those bits out easily when you wear them out. And uh, it works a charm. It's really a nice little unit. Now I'm going to bring in my lathe file and just fare in the edge of the ball to the rest of the cylinder there and then clean up the, the rest of the surface. And then I'm going to jump in there with some scotch bright and just shine it all up because this is really a very visible, uh, sexy part of the clock, I think. So I'm checking my length from the dowels that I had proved out as being the right length and now I'm going to part off one of the front legs because parting is such sweet sorrow. Thank you, William Shakespeare. Yes. So another one like that and then this is the rear leg. I'm flipping this around in the chuck. And yes, I didn't bother protecting the, ch the brass from the jaws. It's not going to bite that hard. So I'm just going to face that off a little bit. So now I'm going to center drill for a tap drill for uh, a quarter by 20 bolt. Drilling that in. And then tapping for quarter by 20. This will give me a nice easy adjustable feature there where I can just rotate that foot from the outside and that will set the height of the back to change the tilt of the whole clock. So I'm just chamfering that a little bit to make it easier for, to put the bolt in. I'm going to check the fit of that bolt. I've got a stainless steel bolt because I'm a classy guy. So now I'm going to glue that in with Loctite and then go over to my bench vise and actually hack off the head of that at a length that's appropriate for the needs there inside the clock. Uh, using my wrench to tighten that down firmly. So I'm going to drill, uh, or tap rather, a quarter by 20 tap down in there for the rear leg. 
So now I can screw that rear leg in on the quarter by 20 bolt and as I said that will allow me to level the whole clock from front to back. Now I'm going to plop these legs in and just glue them in with CA glue, cyanoacrylate glue. That's a, a commonly used in woodworking of course. A little extra wipe off there. That glue will seep in by capillary action and bond that brass to the wood very easily. Any excess I can just wipe up before it set, sets. No sign it was there. Beautiful. So now I'm going to make these little buttons. There's a button that will go on the top which will be the touch button to activate the clock to show the time and there will be another one in the dead center of the clock face to cover up the hole that I need in the middle for all the fabrication I need to do for the clock face. So this is a different radius. It's more of a, a dish than a ball. I guess a button if you will. So I'm going to part this one off. This is going to be the top button and again, this one will have a 632 screw up inside of it to make an electrical connection to the inside of the clock to connect it to the touch-sensitive uh, circuitry. So I'm center drilling as one does. Tap drill for number 632. And of course a number 6 tap, 632. So this will just plop right in the top and it sets in just to a nice height there so it looks like a sexy little dome. And this is the 632 bolt going in from the inside. And then I've got a piece of wire with a lug on it that I'm going to tuck under that screw head and this wire will feed through inside to the circuitry to the touch sensitive switch circuit. So I'm just going to tuck that in a nicely chamfered hole for the wire. So now I'm making the little button for the middle of the clock face and I'm turning that inside section down to a quarter inch because there will be a quarter inch hole through the whole clock face to index it to the motor and all of the other parts. So I've turned that down to a quarter inch and now I'm just going to part it off. And there she goes. Any second now. Almost there, and yes. So that's a nice little part. So, onto the clear clock face. This is 8th inch clear acrylic with a uh, protective coating on it. I've cut it oversized, bigger than the clock, and now I've got a piece of half inch plywood that is a little less than the full size of the clock. And using that countersunk hole there, I'm going to bolt it to my uh, rotary table, the indexing table, and then I'll stick this on with carpet tape. Then I can machine around the outside edge and cut that down to size to match the diameter of the clock. Then I can start drilling all the holes in the outside edge to secure it to the clock. There will be 12 of them at each uh, clock hand position. So I'm starting up by centering the uh, machine and getting my DRO centered and I'm going to mount this down to my indexing rotary table. I ignore the blood stains there. I caught my finger on a milling cutter. Don't we all do that sometimes? I'm sure we do. Get that nice and tight. I wish I'd put some carpet tape between those two because, um, hmm, well, ominous foreshadowing, shall we say. Anyway, now I'm setting it out to the radius, or approximately to the radius. Getting some carpet tape here, and I'm going to put that on the plywood and use that to secure the 8th inch acrylic with its protective coating onto the plywood. So this will give me a, a larger basically indexing table surface that I can use not only to um, bring the radius into the dimension but also to drill precise locations for the 12 uh, screw holes for the clock hand positions which don't actually, actually represent time in this piece. So here we are getting it centered up and pushing it down firmly onto that tape. That should secure it very nicely. So I'm starting up my milling cutter. I'm using a uh, 3 quarter inch carbide cutter. In retrospect, I wish I hadn't used a spiral cutter because it tends to lift the acrylic a little bit. But 
I'm turning the handle on the rotary table there, and now I'm, I'm holding my finger down to prevent it from lifting up because it was getting pulled up by the spiral cutter. As you can see, there's the spiral cutter. Then I realized it would be helpful on the second pass. Whoops, um, yes, well, <laughs> I was going to talk about that little mark there that was the starting point, but then it pulled away from me because I didn't have tape between the rotary table and the plywood, so it slipped. But this is only the second of three passes, so I still have some wiggle room to do some corrections. So now I'm setting up to drill the holes. And quick sidebar, this is a regular drill bit, which is not good for acrylic. And this one is uh, tapered differently to go through acrylic without grabbing on its way through. These are a little bit bigger than the head of the screw to allow the wood movement. So here we go. I'm going to drill through. Now I've got the clamps there. They may or may not be necessary, but it's just a safety feature. Uh, it'll go through there very nicely without pulling the acrylic up, as I mentioned. So I'm just going to go through and do all of these at 30 degree increments. That would give me the 12 clock hand positions for the mounting screws. Again, this is not actually a reference for time in this clock. It's purely decorative, but just a way of indicating that this is a clock. So now I can break this acrylic loose using a, a paint knife. And there we go. That comes off nicely. And this uh, backing material comes off surprisingly easily, much better than paper backing material. So that was really pleasant to take off. Same thing on the other side here. So fortunately, having done all of that, of course, there's now no hole in the center. So I'm getting it all centered up, and then I'm going to tape it down securely so that it's in a good position. I'm coming in at an angle so I can drop that drill in to the exact center of each hole, and that blue tape will tell me when I've gone deep enough. Dropping my first screw in there. These are really nice Phillips head screws. I do prefer Phillips heads. Once I've got it tightened down, I'm going to back it off just a little bit to allow wood movement and plastic movement under the head. So thanks for watching so far. Um, obviously you can see I've got most of the clock finished here. I've got the legs, the face, the top done, and I have some electronics done inside. Um, so the next step in the next video will be to complete the mechanism inside of here that actually shows the time. Stay with me. If you've enjoyed watching the video, please give me a like. Uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to see more and I could always use your support on Patreon so you can see the link to that below in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.